We're going to take you back to the Big Bang event itself a few seconds before and what happened during that time and uh, why does this scientific evidence call for a transcendent supernatural cause? I want you to listen. Our new vehicles will be radio and far infrared telescopes. With these instruments, we can look back to the time before galaxies. If our eyes could see radio waves or infrared waves, we would be able to see distant galaxies more easily. But our eyes can only see electromagnetic emissions in the visible light wave spectrum. Waves in the radio part of the spectrum allow us to peer back in time even farther. This map of the cosmic background radiation, literally the radiation left over from the creation of the universe, carries our eyes as far back in time as any telescope can possibly take them. Here, we are just 380,000 years away from the actual moment of creation. We cannot look back any farther because 380,000 years after the creation event, light first separated from darkness. The view before that time would only offer a featureless glow. We can't see beyond this glow because previous to 380,000 years after the creation event, the universe was too hot for atoms to exist. Electrons could not orbit around nuclei. Because the universe was nothing but charged particles, an amorphous glow is all that appears. For an earlier look, we need to use entirely different vehicles, entirely different instruments, particle accelerators, supercomputers, and gravity wave detectors, not telescopes. With these machines, we can duplicate many of the physical conditions of the cosmos at its earliest moments. The study of the cosmos can be compared with the backward running of a fireworks video. As we measure and observe the cosmos closer and closer to the first moment of its existence, we are running the tape backward toward the moment of creation. As we draw closer still to the creation event, we observe the universe becoming hotter and hotter. Eventually, in this backward replay, the universe will be so hot that protons and neutrons can't stick together. All atomic nuclei fall apart. Let's push on. As we probe even earlier, we encounter a blinding flash just one millisecond from the creation event. This flash is generated by the sudden annihilation of all antimatter in the universe a delicate balance of a billion and one particles to every billion antiparticles guarantees the existence of matter in the later universe, and it also guarantees the possibility of life. Pushing back to just a few dozen microseconds from the creation event, protons, neutrons, antiprotons, antineutrons, decompose into even more fundamental particles called quarks. At one ten billionth of a second from the creation event, the universe is too hot and too dense even for quarks to exist. At a hundred billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second from creation, the universe is too compressed for light to be possible. the universe is now completely dark and smaller than a single atom. All we see at this proximity to the creation event are the shrinking dimensions of length, width, height, and time. That is, until we reach a speck of time, just a ten millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second from creation. Before this moment, all ten dimensions of the universe began to expand. After this instant, only four dimensions continue to expand. So what has happened to the other six spatial dimensions? 
they remain tightly curled up, smaller than a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of an inch around our dimensions of length, width, height, and time. These other six dimensions still exist, but with no possibility of uncurling. Let's dare to roll back the film the rest of the way. The universe continues to shrink, the ten dimensions growing smaller and smaller. At the creation threshold itself, often referred to as the Big Bang, all ten dimensions become infinitely or near infinitely small and suddenly disappear. And it is from this infinitely small beginning that the entire universe sprang forth and every aspect from the formation of planets, galaxies, stars, to the relationship between the mass energy and the space energy density, and even the laws of physics themselves must have been carefully fine-tuned from the creation event in order to make life possible for this brief moment in cosmic history on our tiny blue dot. I told you that would blow your mind. We're going to talk about what you saw more in the programs up ahead. But assuming that you and the astronomers have all kinds of scientific reasons why what you shoot, showed us is true, why is this proof that there's a supernatural cause, agent, behind the universe? Because the causal agent must bring all its matter, energy, space, and time into existence from something beyond, outside of matter, energy, space, and time. Hebrews 11.3, the universe that we can detect was made from that which we cannot detect. So that automatically puts you into a metaphysical causal agent. Then the extreme design that's necessary in the expansion of the universe to produce a universe that could possibly support life uh, points to the personality of this creator.